In this video, I'm going to show you how to build your own custom knowledge base that you can chat with without using RAG, without using Pinecone, without using NAN. It's super easy to do, super easy to set up. Let me show you how to do it. All right, so the way this all works is the trigger starts in Slack and we can chat with a knowledge base. So in this example, let's say I run a local restaurant um, and I have all of my knowledge about the restaurant from my website in this custom knowledge base. So I can chat with that through Slack saying, do we have any vegetarian options? And I actually don't know if it does um, on the menu that I used in the example, but Slack is going to send a message and then our automation, which I'm going to show you in a second, is running in the background right now. And boom, we're gonna get a response back right in Slack. So no, Matt offers a variety of vegetarian options, including, and then, then there's a bunch of salads. Now that those are items actually from their menu. So how are we doing this? We're not using rag, we're not using pinecone, we don't have to do any of that. It's super simple to set up. So let me show you how to do it. All right, so there's a lot of AI automation tools, AI agent tools on the market. I've played with a bunch of them. One of my favorites is Gumloop because it's super simple. The interface is super clean and you don't have to be a coder to understand how to use it like some of those other tools like N8N. So this flow is gonna be built out using Gumloop and I'm gonna give you an overview. It's super simple to set up and then we'll build it from scratch. So it all starts with that Slack message Okay, so the entire automation is run through Slack. As of right now, Gumloop does not have a native chat node. I've pinged them about it. I'm hoping they'll add it. So we're gonna run this through Slack. So you're chatting with your knowledge base through Slack and, and that's how it begins. And then we've got a couple of things going on over here, kind of over to the side. I'm using Google Drive. Again, we don't need RAG or Pinecone. So we're gonna scrape a website, I'll show you how to do that, and then upload that data into Google Drive, okay? And then what we're gonna do is feed that data, which is the information about the website uh, in our example, and we're gonna feed that information, the content of that, the file here from Google Drive, right into this node, it's an Ask, I, Ask AI node. So we're gonna use the file contents as the context for AI. Okay, and then we're gonna prompt AI with the Slack message. So earlier I said, what vegetarian options, right? That's the prompt, and it's gonna use a simple Google Sheet as our context to generate the answer, and it's simply gonna respond back to us in chat. So I would call this a beginner level automation if you're just trying to get your feet wet. Again, this is not uh, super complicated with NHN, which I know is really popular, but it's super, super complicated. We're gonna keep it simple and set this up in Gumloop. All right, so inside of your Gumloop account, they have this hubs where all of your flows live. So once you're signed up, they have a free account, by the way. You can just do new flow, and you're gonna get a blank dashboard that looks like this. Um, we can rename this restaurant, demo, whatever name you want to give it, all right? So it's super clean, and the way that it works is you're going to add, let me try to drag my face, there we go. So you're going to add your first node, that's what they call these kind of modules here, and you can do that over in the sidebar. So again, we're going to start off with Slack. That's the trigger. When, when, the, when the automation receives a message from Slack, that's our trigger. So when you click that button, you're gonna get a bunch of different nodes that you can look through, but I'm just gonna search, search for Slack and it's gonna be message reader. So it's gonna read a message in our Slack channel. So when I drag that onto the canvas, the very first thing that we wanna do is see this activate as flow trigger. So we wanna turn this on or turn it to yes. So this is gonna trigger the whole automation when it receives a new message from that channel. So I'm just gonna turn that over to yes. Now, the second thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is select the channel in Slack. So through your Gumloop settings, which I can kind of open up over here, you need to connect Slack, obviously, and you can do this over in your profile, 
in your personal settings, and then in your credentials, okay? So when you add a credential, you can look for Slack, and this is how you set it up, right? You log in through Slack uh, or with Slack on Gumloop, and once you've done that, you'll be able to choose your channels here, right? You can refresh. And so what I did here in my Slack was I made a brand new channel for this demo, okay? So I, I created a new channel here, and then it does sync up once you invite Gumloop to the channel, okay? So there, there's my channel name there. So the way that you do that, the way that you invite Gumloop to the Slack channel so it can read and respond to your messages is when you're inside your channel, it has to be a public channel, uh, meaning public to your workspace, you do this invite, okay? So it's the backslash invite space at Gumloop. And what you'll see is this app pop up. Now I've already invited it, so I'm not gonna do it again, but you would just click on this and now Gum Gumloop will have access and you'll be able to run the automation through Slack. You can see it's already joined up here. All right, so once you've invited Gumloop to your Slack channel, again, you wanna refresh your channels and choose the one that you're gonna be doing this demo with. Okay, so I've selected my channel here. Message information, I'm gonna leave as messages. Now, this is extremely important. Ignore bot messages. You wanna turn that on. Otherwise, Slack and, and the AI will just start talking to each other back and forth, and there's really no way to turn it off. So make sure you have yes set up. So this completes the Slack node setup. All right, next we need to build our database. Again, we don't need rag or pine cone. We're going to just do this super simple in Google Drive. So for the example that I'm going with here, I'm going to pick a local restaurant in my area and just pretend that we're setting this up for, you know, employees or the owners or whatever. People to just chat with information about the hours and the menu and specials and all that kind of stuff. So how do we build our database so that we can communicate with it through Slack. So what I'm gonna use in this video is a very cool tool. It's a scraping kind of marketplace here called Appify, okay? Appify.com. And they have a bunch of different scrapers. So I'm in the store here. And the one that we're gonna use in this video is called the Website Content Crawler. You can search for that in the search field, but it's probably gonna show up because it might be the most popular one, okay? Website Content Crawler. All right, so once we have that pulled up, what we want to do is, so what this is going to do is going to scrape all of the URLs and text from a given website. And what we're going to do is feed that into Google Drive so that our AI can interact with it. So we need to scrape the website. Now, again, for the example of this, I'm using a, a very good restaurant near me and I have the URL pulled up over here. And again, they've got like an about page, a menu, happenings, uh, private events, gift cards, contacts. So it's not a lot of pages, okay? Um, and so I'm gonna grab that URL and I've already plugged it into here, but see where the start URL field is? You wanna plug the URL of whatever website you're using in the example here. Now, for the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna leave the rest of these settings as is. You can get a little more uh, complex if you want to, but that's all I'm gonna do. I'm pasting the URL in and I'm just gonna hit start. Now, Appify does have uh, a plan where you get a certain amount of free credits every month, so you can definitely test this out for free. And again, I'm using a smaller website. I think it only has 10 pages or so. So hopefully this should go pretty quick. But in the background, Appify is going out and it's going and visiting every single URL on this domain, and it's scraping all of the text, okay? So I'm gonna let this run for a second while it finishes. All right, so you can see Appify has finished scraping the website. There's only nine pages, and that took a minute and a half, okay? So you can see it's scraping the URLs over here, and it's scraping the text from those URLs as well. So the next thing we wanna do is export these results into a CSV file so we can upload it to Google Drive, okay? So I'm just gonna click this export nine results button. And I wanna do a couple of things here. Number one, I wanna make sure that I'm on CSV format for Google Sheets. And the second thing I wanna do is just, I'm gonna manually select the fields 
Because depending on what scraper you use, if you select all fields, Appify can spit out like 47 different rows and it's a nightmare. So this is a very simple scrape. We only have the URL and the text. Okay, so those are the only two fields we need. So when I go back to the export button, I can select my fields here. Okay, so I'm going to do URL and I'm going to do text, right? We don't need all of the other stuff in there. Okay, so I've got those selected. I've got CSV selected. I'm just going to download that file. Now, inside of Google Drive, you can make a folder specifically for this. So you can see I've got my Nomad demo here. I've already uploaded this, but all you're going to do is go to New and then File Upload, and then you're going to grab that document from your desktop or your downloads or wherever it was. And then it's going to come in here like a CSV file like this. All you do is right click and you go open with Google Sheets. So I've already cleaned mine up a little bit, but I'm, I'm just going to show you it again. So it's going to look something like this. You can clean up these columns a little bit by dragging them over. Uh, I've already cleaned mine up a little bit over here. And so I've got, this is kind of my finalized spreadsheet, right? This is my knowledge base. See how super easy that is? This is the knowledge base that our AI is going to communicate with, okay? So now that we have our knowledge base set up in Google Drive, we need to add it to our workflow in Gumloop. All right, so to add the Google spreadsheet that we just downloaded, right, our knowledge base here, I'm going to go back to the Node library. I'm going to search for Google Drive and we're gonna use file reader, and I'm kinda of gonna just drag it over here towards the side, kind of like the bottom side of the Slack channel here. And what you need to do, like we did with Slack, you need to go into your settings inside of Gumloop, just like I did before, and hook up your Google account so that Gumloop can sync up with your files, okay? So you have to be logged into your Google account through Gumloop. And then when you're there, we want to go to pick the file, right? So we want to pick that file that we just created just by selecting pick file. I'm going to go to the Nomad demo, Nomad menu, and I'm going to hit select. All right, so now I've got my menu or my database or my, my, my custom knowledge base selected in Google Drive. All right, the next thing that we want to do, and this is the AI step, is we want to uh, put up, uh, or excuse me, insert uh, an AI node from Gumloop. And the one that I'm gonna use, okay, it's this very first one actually, they've got a lot of AI nodes here, is this Ask AI. So again, I'm just gonna drag this right on here. I love how Gumloop, the, the user interface. And so this is gonna really be the, the engine of our automation here. And it's gonna take in a couple of pieces of context. So you can see that this is basically we, we're, it's looking for two pieces of information and you can tell by the, the top here. So it needs a prompt and, and optionally it, it needs some context. So what are we asking the AI, right? If you go back to my example here, what I said is, do we have any vegetarian options? Okay. And that's really what my prompt is. Okay. So my, my message. So in gum loop, you can see the bottom of this this message thing, I'm gonna drag that and connect it to the prompt and you'll see the prompt box gray out here, meaning that we're using the prompt from the message. So I'm asking the AI, do we have any vegetarian options? That's all I'm saying. But the AI needs context, like what am I even talking about, right? And that's where the Google Drive reader comes in. So we've already set this up where it has all of the information about the restaurant here. Now, what I need to do here is there's two outputs here. There's file name and file contents. So obviously the file name is not really relevant to what I'm asking. What I want is this file contents, meaning the information in the, in the Google file, the Google Drive file. So I'm gonna drag this output over across to context and you'll see the context box gray out when I do that. Okay, so now our AI node, our AI agent has the message prompt from Slack, do we have any vegetarian options? And it has the context, okay? It has the database from Google Drive as the file contents dragged in over to this context node. So now it knows what I'm asking, 
from Slack and it knows the context from Google over here. All right, the final step here is we want to put another Slack node at the end of this because we want the AI to send us the response through Slack. So I'm just going to search the nodes again, but this time we need the, where is the sender here? Oh, sorry, Slack message sender, right? Because it's going to send the message. So I'm going to drag this over to my canvas here. I'm going to put it directly below the AI. Okay, so the AI is going to respond based on my message and based on the context. And I'm going to grab its response and drag it to the message from Slack. Okay, now the next thing you want to do here is make sure you're in the right channel. I've made this mistake before. Remember, we're in this Y YouTube 01 um, channel. And so it's sending, it's going to send the message back to the correct channel. All right, everything looks good up here. I just realized I forgot one pretty important thing for the Ask AI node. We can choose our model here. I don't want to use Claude IQ. So they've got a bunch of OA, uh, open AI models, Anthropic, Google, Perplexity. They've got a ton of models in here. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to use uh, GPT-40 Mini. So you do want to select your model there. I forgot to point that out. Okay, but other than that, and listen, I should have been saving this the entire time. You can save your workbook as you go. I would do it after every single um, node that you drop on. Just hit the Save button up here. But I think we're looking pretty good. All right, now that we are looking pretty good, what I'm gonna do is just test it by sending a message through my Slack. So again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send the message through Slack, which is gonna act as the trigger. Then the Slack message reader node is gonna take that message in. It's gonna pass the message to the AI agent node here, the Ask AI which is taking the prompt, my question, along with the context of our database here, which we quickly built up using Appify in Google Drive, right? So it's taking the context, it's taking the prompt, it's gonna do all of the thinking in the background, and then it's gonna produce the response back to us in Slack. Um, so we're gonna go into Slack and then ask it another question. All right, so back in Slack, I'm gonna ask it a different question, and I'm gonna say, what days and hours do we serve brunch? Send that off. And in the background, and I'll, I'll show you uh, after this, and it comes back with a really quick response here. I'm not sure why it responded twice, but it did say brunch is served at Nomad on the following days and hours, Saturday from 11 to 3.30, Sunday from 10.30 to 3.30. And if I go back here, you can see where it's pulling that from. Saturday and Sunday, 11 to 3.30, 10.30 to 3.30. So it's pulling in the correct information. The AI is going into this document, finding it, and giving it back to me as a response in Slack. So you, you can see how cool and how fast that was. Now, if you want to test the flow and see, the, the, see it working in the background through Gumloop itself, we can just run it up here. And I'm going to hit that Run button. And you can see it, it, it finished in four seconds, okay? And I'm not gonna get too detailed here, but it's gonna show you the step-by-step. -step. So it's reading the Google Drive reader first, not sure why, uh, the Slack message, then it's asking the AI, then it's sending it back to Slack. So you can check the inputs and the outputs for all of these. You can expand these like this. If, if this, this is good for troubleshooting, right? I can expand this. Um, and so this is the message, right? What days and hours do we serve brunch? And then it's gonna send that to the AI. I can see the inputs and outputs over here as well, right? And so the prompt, what days and hours do we serve brunch? I can see the response, right? So this is the response from the AI. So you can see every single step when you run it from the sidebar. It's good for troubleshooting, especially if you have longer automations you wanna test along the way. You can see everything that's happening over here. So I really like this as a basic automation and, and really show the, the powerful tools in Gumloop and the simplicity that we can do this all through Google Drive. We don't need to get complicated with Rag and Pinecone. And it's a really user-friendly platform, especially if you're just getting started running basic 
automation. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you want to see next. Um, and if you enjoyed, subscribe to the channel and give me a like.